I just want to show you why I've been putting off reading Shadow and Bone. This week I am staying at my parents' house to look after their cat while they're away. And this is the TV that my parents have. Let me show you. Now this might not look that big, but then look at how far away from the TV I am. <laughs> it's a pretty massive TV in comparison to the one that I have. And they also have a sound bar that's like, if I can get my finger in the camera, there. So yeah, I'm gonna be listening to Shadow and Bone really loud, watching it on the big screen. So that's why I've been delaying it because I knew this experience would be the best. Okay, I promise I'm gonna remember to start the reading vlog finally in a minute. But can we appreciate my hair? Ah, I'm finally having success. I actually managed to get up early enough to shower before work today. And the success, look at it. Oh, mm, I am so happy. It doesn't look as good as it probably should because I should probably put some makeup on to make my face kind of look better to match my hair, but my wavy hair is looking good. I'm so happy. Um, so anyway, yes, my name is Lily. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. This week, I am mainly focusing on reading Where the Crawdad Sings by Delia Owens. I'm actually nearly done with this book. So I have been mixing the audiobook and the physical, which has been really, really helping because I was kind of getting stuck reading the physical because it's a bit of a slow read. There's not really any plots to this book. And basically, it's set in two timelines-ish. It's kind of like 1969 is almost like the present day timeline. And then it goes back to when the main character is younger and it kind of builds back up to the 1969 timeline but it switches between the two as well so in the 1969 timeline there is a young man who was like the captain of the football team and everything and he's now like grown up and he's married and everything but he is found dead at the bottom of this like water tower i think in the marshes and there's rumors of this girl called the marsh girl who everyone knows is real because they've met her but there's basically rumours that she is the one who was involved with him and might have killed him. And the Marsh girl is a girl named Kaya, and she has been living on her own in the marshes since she was six years old, after her entirely, after her entire family left her one by one. And so you get the story of the police investigating the 1969 death of Chase Andrews, and you get the story of Kaya from the beginning when her family's all there together up until 1969 when the murder happens so yeah it's it's really really interesting actually i'm so surprised by how much i'm finding this interesting i am reading this because my mother-in-law bought a copy and said we should both read it so that we could talk about it she read it back in like november and i'm finally reading it so we're getting there but yeah it is actually really really good i'd highly recommend it i've been really enjoying it it definitely lives up to the hype and it doesn't read like a regular literary fiction to me it's very very readable it's not dense and i think part of that is because for a big proportion of the book kaya is not particularly educated so having big and flowery words and like complex prose really wouldn't fit with a very uneducated character so yeah, that is my main read. I am nearly done. As I've said, I've only got a little bit left really. So I should finish that by the end of the week and I'll let you know my final thoughts, but I'm loving it. I really love the character of Tate. I am so glad we get to see him so much in this book. And yeah, I really like him. And Kaya is a really, really great female character. I love how she is so resourceful, is doing everything for herself and is working really hard. But yeah, um, <laughs> that is all I have on that front. I don't know if I'm going to be picking up any other books. I bought like four books with me for a five day stay, <laughs> as, as I always do. So I have got some other books to pick from. And when I finish Where the Crawdad Sings, I will let you know if I pick anything else up. I've also started Shadow and Bone, which I started last night because I'm taking advantage of my parents' superior tv setup and i'm enjoying it i really am i think independent of the books it's really good but i just can't get over how dirty they have done six of crows like i just want a six of crows adaptation i don't really care that much about the shadow and bone part of it and i feel like to make the shadow and bone story more interesting they kind of just ruined six of crows for me i don't know I i'm enjoying the shadow and bone storyline for sure and 
I like the characters in Shadow and Bone, but I think for me, the dregs are not as I imagined them. I'm not going to say any spoilers, don't worry. If you haven't watched it, I'm not going to give any spoilers. I've only watched two episodes myself. But for me, especially the characterization of Kaz in the TV series is not how I kind of imagined him in my head when I was reading. He definitely comes across less kind of boyish, I guess. I know he comes across quite grown up in the books, but in the TV show, you could easily mistake him for someone much older than he actually is in a way that I don't think he comes across in the books. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, maybe I'll get into it more as I see more of the dregs because the first couple of episodes have been more focused on the Shadow and Bone characters. But yeah, I love Alina and Mal. I think they're really great. I think the Darkling was really well cast. I really like Jesper. Jesper was really well cast. But yeah, Kazan and Nerj so far, I'm not convinced, but maybe they will win me over by the end of the first series. Okay, so it is still Wednesday, Wednesday, and I am here because I finished Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, and oh my god, if you have not read this book yet, you are sleeping on it just like I was. So, um, I think I've already summarised this and told you why I'm reading it, so I'm going to just talk to you about my thoughts on it. So I'm going to start with my non-spoilery thoughts and then I will have a spoilery segment. So non-spoilery thoughts, this is a really good book. Like I said before, it's literary fiction but it doesn't read like literary fiction. It's very accessible and I really really enjoyed the simplicity of the story. It's nothing complicated but it's very compelling and it's very interesting hearing about Kaya's life as she lives isolated in the marshes and yeah that was really interesting I loved it I love the characters especially Tate and Jumpin um so Tate is like one of the love interests in the book who teaches Kaya to read and Jumpin is the owner of like this convenience store in the marshes where she goes to get her boat refueled and she buys her supplies that she get can get so she doesn't have to go into town and those two characters were really really great and what I found quite interesting about those two characters was they were very strong positive male characters in her life and male influences in her life especially Jumpin and I kind of loved the way that Jumpin and his wife Mabel kind of became her surrogate parents I thought that storyline was really good and I really really loved that especially because it kind of drew on the parallels of how Jumpin and Mabel are black and this is set in the 1960s so they would have been heavily discriminated against and because Kaya has become this like mythical marsh girl and is treated like trash she's in some ways on a similar level to Mabel and Jumpin and I thought Bluebell what are you doing? Does Bluebell be in trouble? Bluebell! Okay. But yeah, so I thought that was really interesting and the parallels that um, Dee Owens drew I felt like were very appropriate because she wasn't trying to say, oh it's like she's a black girl. She was trying to say that their marginalisations kind of drew them together. And I found that really interesting. And I just, I found Kaya to be a very sympathetic character, but also she was very strong and independent. And I really liked that about her. Even from when she was like a really tiny kid and had been left alone, she was determined not to die and not to have to rely on anyone else or to be taken away by social services. And I thought that determination in that character was really strong and the characterization stayed really strong. But I found also that her character development was really interesting. I found that like you could see where things were coming from and you could see her thought process was happening and it made sense. The character development made sense and her interactions with the people around her made sense. I liked the modern day, I guess, storyline where we are following her, like the investigation of the murder of Chase Andrews. I thought that was really interesting and seeing like trials and stuff was really interesting and I thought the way that was handled was not in too much detail that it became like a murder mystery or a crime novel but it was enough to let you know how the attitudes of the town were and I thought that was interesting as well because you're seeing everything from Kaya's perspective in the like telling Kaya's life story side but you also get to get this insight into how the town views Kaya and the people in the marshes so yeah I really really enjoyed it now we're going to go into the spoilery part so um before we get to the spoiler part actually I will tell you what I'm going to be reading next so that if you want to skip this and not hear the spoilers 
please like go to the next clip so before I do that if you are interested do go and read this it is so good I listened to this partially via audiobook and I would recommend the audiobook as well so the next book I am going to be reading is From Little Tokyo with Love by Sarah Kuhn so this is a copy that I was given by the publisher um, in exchange for promoting it on my Instagram. I'm not getting paid for it or anything, they just sent me the book for free. And I am going to read it and I'll probably post a full length review as well and I'll put it up on my Instagram. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be reading next. This is, I don't actually know what this is. It doesn't have a blurb on the back, but I'm intrigued. And it's, she is the author of I Love You So Much, so if you like I Love You So Much, then here's her next book. Spoilery thoughts. The ending. Oh my goodness. So when Kaya gets arrested and put on trial, like, you know that's coming. I I didn't want to mention it properly in my non spoilery part, just in case people got mad at me and said it was a spoiler, when if you read in, like, it's really obvious that's what's going to happen. But I found it really interesting how we got to see how likely and unlikely it was that this happened. And then at the end, it was revealed that that really, really unlikely scenario was actually what happened and she did actually kill Chase. Like what <laughs> i was blown away by that and the way it's discovered so if you can't remember you've read the book before um the way it's discovered is um tate so she so kaya dies and tate is sort of wandering around the house after she's died and he discovers this little trap door in the house and when he opens it up he finds out that number one kaya has been writing all of those poems that's been peppered throughout the books she is the local poet who's been published in the newspaper all the time which i was not predicting at all even though as soon as it was revealed i was like oh yeah it's completely obvious but um he also finds a poem that kind of reveals that she murdered chase and then he finds the necklace in that trap door thingy um that was on chase the morning that he died but was not on his body after he died and so yeah it, it, that is proof that she killed him and he kind of just is like yeah good for her and <laughs> honestly like yes good for her um but uh, i was i was like fully convinced that tate had done it like i thought because the cap was given to her by tate so i thought maybe he had taken it from her shack and maybe she told him what chase had done he'd found the cap taken it and killed chase while she was out of town so that she would have a solid alibi that's where i thought this was going and i thought when the sheriff like bumps into tate in the marshes um before they get back together i thought that was going to be the sheriff arresting him because they figured out it was him but no that was his dad dying which i thought was a bit of a weird i, I don't understand really why his dad needed to die and what that point of it was but anyway so yeah i was fully convinced it was going to be tate and it wasn't it was actually kaya and pff, i was yeah yeah that was so cool um so yeah those two reveals at the end as soon as they were revealed i saw i saw it i mean like kaya murdering chase you knew exactly how she could do it because in all fairness the district attorney did figure it out <laughs> he did figure out he just wasn't believed because it sounded so far-fetched um but yeah the poetry thing felt obvious afterwards um and I, i'm not surprised that kaya killed him because around the time that the sexual assault happens she says something along the lines of like she needs to get revenge like this x y and z like gets revenge she needs to get revenge i believe it's when she's looking at like, the praying mantis eating um its mate and so I'd always suspected had she actually done it but the way the trial was laid out and the way we were like kind of led to follow the defense and the way that she was like acquitted kind of convinced me that she hadn't done it so the way the story was told was just so so good I wish I could say this in a review that everyone could watch because it's really hard to explain how good this book is without spoiling it but oh, it just fully convinced me that she didn't do it when actually she did and they were telling you exactly how she did it oh it's such a good book i thought the ending like for kaya as well like how her life played out was really good i think it was quite fitting that she didn't have any of her own children because i don't think she would have known how to be a parent after all of that because she's so independent and tate doesn't rely on her and she doesn't rely on tate they kind of like coexist and they love each other but they don't rely on each other and that 
as soon as you added a child to that mix, I feel like it would have broken apart their relationship because Tate would have had to have taken on more of that parental role because I don't think she would have been able to adjust her life enough to take on a child as well. But I think her being an auntie was really good. I could see her like taking the kids out, exploring and stuff. So yeah, I thought that was really good. Um, there was another thing I was going to say. Oh yeah, and I think what was really interesting was I actually found her quite relatable um, as an autistic person. I don't believe Kai is autistic. I think, however, that she presents very similarly to autistic people because when you think about it, autistic people are given... Autistic people are born without the manual on how to like live life and they have to kind of learn to copy people but we're not very good at it at times and it can be really hard and draining and Kaya is similar because she was so isolated from society she never learnt the rules of society and kind of just went by what she felt was right so maybe she is autistic and is just being authentically autistic because society's never forced her to mask but Either way, I found it as an autistic person really interesting to read because I felt like that's probably how autistic people were treated back at that time as well because they would have been very similar to Kaya. Um, so yeah, I just enjoyed that aspect of her character that I found her very relatable. Um, so yeah, that is that is all of my thoughts, I think. If I come up with any more, I will add another update. But yeah, I am honestly blown away by this book and um, yeah. I'm ready to read my next book hopefully uh, I might just read a couple of chapters to ease myself in because this is a young adult romance next which is a very different genre I just finished episode five of Shadow and Bone. If you haven't seen Shadow and Bone yet, you might want to skip this because I'm about to do spoilers because I'm mad. <laughs> so episode five is the one where um, the dregs try to break into the little palace to kidnap Alina, which already is such a deviation from the Six of Crows plot that I hate it. But also, they were completely irrelevant to the entire thing. They did nothing nothing like all of their plans other than the ones who flush out the bad guy failed and the only way they actually got alina was because she hid herself in their carriage the dregs are amazing at heists why why did we have the heist not go right they're doing the dregs so dirty in this series like I am loving the Shadow and Bone plot. I think they're doing Shadow and Bone amazingly well, but Six of Crows and the Dregs, not happy. Also, can we talk about the fact that Wyland just isn't there? Like, my boy, probably my favorite other than Kaz. Like, oh. Like, oh. I'm such a like mixed feelings about the show because I am loving the Shadow and Bone adaptation, but I am hating the six of crows adaptation the only character i feel like out of the six of crows story so far they've got right is jesper like i think jesper's great but inej not liking she's got like zero personality compared to the books nina we've barely seen her won't pass any judgment although i am annoyed at her storyline uh matthias again we've not really seen much of him so won't pass judgment but kaz i'm like this is not my kaz this is not the kaz that i pictured this is not the kaz that i wanted um so yeah Six of the Crows, I am, um, I'm sorry they did this to you. Uh, I guess that's all I wanted to say. I just finished episode five and was really angry. So I was like, I need to vlog this because my boyfriend won't care. <laughs> so yeah, that is all that this update is. Um, I will go back to watching Six of Crows and maybe do some yoga to calm down. <laughs> Hello, it is Friday and it has been another successful natural hair day. I'm not sure how good it looks on camera, but in real life i'm loving it it and like my bangs this time actually kind of fit with the whole with the whole look i don't have to pin them back so it's really hard to see with the sun <laughs> but yeah i've got actual like little 
ringlets forming. It's so cute. But yeah, um, so I thought, seeing as I was at my parents' house, and I haven't got any more reading updates for you yet, I thought I would show you some of the pictures of baby me that they have around the house. So, yeah, I finished work for the day. I'm going to show you quickly. Also, the first time I'm looking presentable this week is because I'm seeing family. <laughs> so, let me give you a little tour. Oh, oh, bad exposure. <laughs> let me give you a little tour of some of the pictures around here that I think you'll enjoy. Okay, so first up, we have this picture of little baby me with, I think it's a giant chocolate bunny. I think this is at Dylan's Candy Bar in New York based on my age and what I'm wearing and my hair. Um, and yeah, I think I look really cute. I look like such a little bean. <laughs> Sorry this isn't centered. I'm trying not to show the faces of people I don't have permission to show the face off. But this is little baby me looking through a crack in the fence. Apparently I used to do this when I was a baby and call for my favourite neighbour who lived on the other side of the fence. So this one I've had to get pretty close to to avoid showing other people's faces. But this is me in New York again. Um, and... I was with my dad, we walked to this bridge while my mum and my sister went shopping and he was like, oh, pretend you're holding it up, but I was like facing the sun, so we ended up with this facial expression. But we did get the finger holding up the bridge, which was fun. Now I have this picture of like teenager me. I think this is when I went to Brussels in Belgium with my mum after A-level results. So I would have been about 18, nearly 19 in this picture. And I, I like this picture, but I'm not sure if I like it enough that it's framed. <laughs> um, this is when we went to this little waffle shop that we found and um, they did like savoury waffles and mine's filled with like cheese I think. It was really really good. That's also my favourite t-shirt and I don't fit into it right now and I cannot wait to fit back into it because I love it so much. Also interrupting with Bluebell, Bluebell content. I love Bluebell, she's so cute. Bluebell, look at camera, yeah Bluebell. Can I fuss? about ASMR. Next we have this caricature of me. Um, this is when we went to Sidari in 2006. So that makes me eight years old, I think. Uh, so kind of weird that it looks like <laughs> I've got boobs, but I don't. Um, <laughs> and you can see I was such a tomboy back then. I'm wearing my trainers and my shorts and my t-shirt, but I had an ice cream that's dripping and oh yeah, and he got my dimples, which my mum really loved. These have been framed in our house since they were made. <laughs> my mum loves them. And yeah, this is like over, over the stairs. So yeah, that's kind of cute. Perhaps the most exciting development is I found my baby book. Um, look at me with those cute little dimples from day one and that, oh, I was so cute. Um, but yeah, this is my baby book. I don't know if this is common in other countries, but my mum has all of our like baby photos in this little album that says like baby on it and it's really cute. So I'm going to show you some of my favourites from this album as well because why not? Look at my little happy face in this bouncer. Um, there's less that I can show you than I thought because a lot of them have other people in them or are me naked. So I'm not going to show you those, but look, look at that little face. <laughs> oh, I was cute as a baby. Me in my natural habitat. A chonky smile from a chonky baby. What a mood. Okay, but this is actually a really good shot and I love it and this is really cute. So yeah, well done, mum. <gasps> Me with my favourite teddy that I'm pretty sure I lost at some point. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. I am uncertain. <laughs> Send help. <laughs> oh, child model, where's the contract? Also a mood. A happy little bean on her car. Okay, but real talk, I want this dress. Where do I get this dress? That colour is beautiful. I want it. Was I yawning, screaming or laughing? You decide. Oh, also, I apparently like to open the cupboards and empty the cupboards out as well as caught here red-handed. 
And thus ends the baby slash family photo tour for you. I hope you enjoyed that. I really did. I love looking through my baby album. Like the pictures are so cute and funny. I was such a cute baby. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> that's all. Uh, I kind of wish I could show you more, but I don't have permission from other people. So um, yeah, that that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little segment. <laughs> I'll check in with you guys later on. Ignore the terrible lighting, my reading lamp is on and I can't be bothered to turn it back off, but look what's arrived! It's Heartstopper Volume 4. I'm gonna sit down and read this now, um, so you're gonna see my reaction straight afterwards, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I've heard this one's a bit a bit of a sad boy one, so... Um, also, apparently, Volume 5 is gonna be the last one, which is a big frowny face from me. Um, hello, Maggie! Can you not, like, scratch the sofa live on the vlog, please? <laughs> so yeah, I will let you know what I think of this when I finish. Um, <laughs> in other news, um, I have no water at the moment, there's been a burst pipe in the area, so that's fun. Sorry, did I stop fussing? Um, come back. Um, so yeah, it's been a bit of a stressful day, so I'm gonna wind down by watching Heartstopper. Watching? Reading Heartstopper Volume 4. This book? My babies! Oh, I just want to give them all a hug. Oh, Charlie, I love you. Nick, you're the best boyfriend. <sighs> Read this series.